Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all our viewers across the globe. COVID-19 is the word spoken every different part of the world. Whether it's being United Kingdom or whether it's being Bangladesh, whether it's being United Kingdom or whether it's being India, COVID-19 or Corona is the most discussed topic right going across the world. Nuclear power, superpowers, biological weapons no one's being interested in it's all about covid 19. most of the biggest cities across the world are being shut the most beautiful airports has been closed the people are being totally locked down at their homes no idea what to be done it's not about the economy which has gone down it's not about the cities which has been shut it's not about the airports which has been closed but it's about the death which is being rising each and every second united states in 24 hours, the death rate was 8,000, sorry, 2,802. In the United Kingdom, the death rate was 802 in 24 hours. In the United States itself, the active cases are 640,000 across in the United States. Most of the world has been suffering, whether it's being rich or poor, the royal or the normal people. Everyone is being affected with COVID-19. There's no changes being done. The world is being tackling hard. The health professionals are being really fighting hard from the front lines, saying we will flatten the curve. But let's see how Australia is being doing really, really great. It's been a hard work and diligence that has seen us flatten the curve with less than one percentage a day increase in new corona cases in the last seven days running. Let me with pride tell our viewers. We, the country Australia, has proved it really well. The total leadership of our Australian government was really absolutely great. We totaled 6,645 cases, in which 4,685 recovered and only 1,889 active cases at this time. We need to keep our faith and keep doing what we have been doing as per the Australian government's regulation. It's not only flattening the curve with pride, with we will go, we will take it on and we will say that we will eradicate this curve. Today on Let's Connect, we have a very special dignitary, very special. The great loved man among the most communities, a powerful statesman, a leader, outstanding community worker, qualified in counter-terrorism, had been a police officer with Victoria Police counter-terrorism until he joined politics. Elected to the Australian House of Representatives for the division of Latrop, Party of Victoria 2004 federal election. Since 2013, continuously for three terms. Let me repeat it continuously for three terms. In 2013, 2016, 2019 represents the electoral rate of Latrobe as Member of Parliament. Assistant Minister for Customs, community safety and multicultural affairs. Always had been a very helpful hand towards most of the migrant community. No matter where you come from, which part of the country you leave, always had been ready to help at any time. More than a minister of Australia, we would love to say that and welcome our best loved prior friend, Minister Jason Wood to M4 TV studio live from his office. Dear Minister, Namaste. Namaste, Finney. I'm very excited to be with you. You'll be getting me excited over here. Thank, Thank you, Minister, Minister, for your great, great time. time. Even, Even at such a crisis, crisis, we do understand, you, understand you have been really busy. busy. But, but thanks, thanks a lot, lot from our, our, our studios. studios. Thank, Thank you, you, you for, for your, your special, special precious, precious time, time over here. here. My pleasure. Minister, Minister, our, our viewers, viewers are really excited to hear from you. you. What's the Australian, Australian government's powerful work for the public during such a shocking virus threat? First of all, can I can say a big thank you to the, the Indian community and the wider multicultural community. And Australia is very multicultural. In fact, out of nearly 50% of our population, um, an individual or one of the parents was born overseas. So we are really multicultural. We've seen in the recent bushfires in January, um, the Indian community, whether it be um, the Gujarati or, or the, the Hindus or or the, um, the Sikhs and, and, and other groups, I can't name them all, um, but the support provided during the bushfire crisis. So you find a multicultural community and our Australian community um, love a fight, 
And the awful thing about this virus, it has been this huge fight, it's been huge discipline, and through uh, the Australian Prime Minister, uh, Scott Morrison, he set up a national cabinet to work with all um, premiers and, and leaders around the country, it didn't matter whether, and I'm a Liberal member of Parliament, Liberal or Labor, to make sure we work together. And Australia, we can be very proud, Australia is now probably the benchmark around the world. Our hospitals are not full with, with people are suffering this awful virus. In actual fact, they're rather empty. And next Monday is a great day because we're going to see elective surgery start up again um, for people who need um, hip and shoulder operations for children, etc. So we haven't had that that awful wave of, of influx compared to other countries. And there's been a few reasons for that. Uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison um, very early on caught a travel ban from, from China. And also, can we say, all the Chinese people who did come to Australia, unless you're an Australian citizen or permanent resident or had a, a, a close family member, you couldn't come here. But when they did, they, they isolated and did a great job. Um, we were criticised, Australia was criticised in actual fact by the World Health Organisation officials saying we didn't need a, a travel ban. Australia and the Prime Minister has proven that to be the correct decision. We took the same decisions when it came to Italy and Iran and eventually the rest of the world. When it comes to our health system, and again, when we look at, um, and I've been passing this message to our um, parents back home in India, Australia has probably the best health system in the world. And that's why we've seen very few um, cases of, of people um, dying from COVID-19 in Australia. But sadly, everyone who has died um, there hasn't been the funerals. It's, it's been absolutely awful. So our hearts and prayers always go out to those our victims. Uh, and also, too, we haven't gone to full lockdown in Australia. I was getting a bit of concern and heat from my Indian friends in Sri Lanka and other communities saying we need to go to full lockdown. But we've been able to do this, keeping um, businesses as best we could ongoing, uh, whether it be, for example, the hardware stores, the pharmacies, the, the supermarkets, and also even gardeners can go out and, and work. We've really made sure we've kept the, the country going as best we could. But for those people who, who have lost a job or the business has closed down, we've put in place a JobKeeper package. It's a very expensive pack, $130 billion, uh, $1,500 a, a fortnight for those workers who may have lost their, their job. And the reason is we want to make sure um, we support the wider Australian community and those who have been in work. We know it's really tough when you've lost a job, and that's why we need to get the economy rocking and rolling very soon. That's, that's really great. We do understand each and every citizen of Australia understand it's the importance of the leadership of our Prime Minister, which has played a really, really great role in preventing, flattening the curve, as well as the only places which are not closed are the hospitals. What would you say the role of health professionals, including doctors and nurses, which are fighting from the front line with the COVID-19? Well, can I just say um, a, a huge thank you to uh, doctors and nurses, the staff, the, the cleaners, anyone involved in the hospital, the medical um, profession. And, and recently, my, my father um, had to go into ISU, which is intensive care. Nothing to do with the virus, had some health issues. Can I say, um, in particular, the nurses, there are so many multicultural nurses, Indian nurses, and they were absolutely fantastic looking after him. We've seen the tragedy overseas. I think it's coming up in the UK where nearly 100 health professionals have, have died. I'm hearing figures in, in Italy where some 10% of, of these amazing health officials uh, ha have actually attracted the virus. So rather than say, oh, this is dangerous, I'm not going to go to work, they've gone to to work and, and even can I just say a big thank you to anyone working in the in the supermarket uh, especially a, a few weeks ago when you you were there uh, true whatever it is, it is you you kept the country moving we thank you so much thank you. The, the Prime Minister has made a very strong point this is when it comes to schools is anyone who has a job as far as we're concerned it is an essential service and if we've really push the schools to make sure to stay open to ensure if a, if a parent cannot um, look after their child because of work, we don't want the parent to lose a job. So we've worked very closely with the schools. And when it comes again to the this awful virus, the impacts on young people, children have been around the world very, very uh, low indeed. The danger is always 
always been the older generation and over the age of, of 70. One thing which I've done for my office, um, we've arranged for um, phone calls to go into pretty much as soon to be everyone in my electorate over the age of 70, including arranging people who may speak um, Punjabi to ring up someone else, especially the seniors, to have that voice um, and that language I understand and to go through about how you can actually order online to get your shopping or it's also important to get the flu vaccinations um, and that's a big message I get your flu vaccination what what we saw in China is people would get the virus and then the flu and it becomes this awful um, concoction of, of viruses but again thank you very much for all those today and can we say to one thing the Australian government has done when it's come to, to international students working as nurses over here in the medical profession to allow them to go and, and work in hospitals and provide that, that support. It's, it's been no doubt uh, the leadership being provided by the Australian government has been absolutely wonderful. For all the Australian governments, as you have mentioned, 130 billion for the JobKeeper payment and 1,500 for every eligible employee in Australia. Not only that, let me remind you all our viewers who are seeing it, 80 percentage of the people who had been affected in Australia has been recovered. Only 1,800 are still active. The hard work by the Australian has been paid. We are in the road back from the corona crisis, but we will have to stick to the plans as per our SCOMO's, our Prime Minister's SCOMO's advice, which he has given yesterday. Is that right, Minister? Absolutely. It can also make, and this is a, a, a point when it's been made by the Chief Medical Officer, Brenda Murphy, um, our Health Minister at the national level, um, Greek Hunt. We've seen some other countries like uh, Singapore and Japan and go backwards when they're actually doing really well. So we have to keep the, the social distancing going. And can I say too, when it comes to washing your hands, and, and people don't realise this, that the reason you have to wash your hands for 20 seconds, it actually kills the virus. That's oh, yeah. why we have, have have the time limits on there, 20 seconds, and, and the distance of 1.5 metres. And, and it's like yesterday we had, I think, one or two cases in Victoria. It, it's gone up again. It's going to keep moving until we, we actually um, get in place as a, a matter of course to keep social distancing going. We really want to get our country back on its feet and keep uh, going, and but we just have to be, be careful. So I know it's been inconvenient, and I apologise uh, for that, but if you look what's happening around the world, and, and one thing I love about the Indian uh, community, it's very much in line with the values of my party, the Liberal Party, very much focused on, on family, is how many on the Indian and multicultural community, their parent live at home with them so they've had this extra burden of making sure if they come home they don't get an elderly um, parent in fact in actual fact uh, my wife is is Chinese and the mother-in-law um, she stays with us too and we've been really careful to make sure we don't pass anything on to her and I know this is in the future this is the way we have to be for some time that's really that's really great to hear from you minister yesterday uh, our Prime Minister has declared after Anzac Day, which is very soon. Slight changes of the current restrictions. Are they only for the elective surgeries to restart? Or is there any other restrictions being moved? At, at this, can, can I make a really valid point for what you just said? And we've had, we've had some people um, complain, and I can understand, who've, who've come back from overseas. And one of the big initiatives the Prime Minister put in place, is anyone traveling from overseas at the moment, they must go into isolation for 14 days, and this is some exceptional circumstances. Sadly, we've had um, some Indian parents and others who've had to come back when there's been a, a, a medical emergency, like a, a dying um, relative. But we've, we've put this really in, in place, and until the health authorities, and this is not the, the politicians making the decisions, we're making, we're listening to our medical health experts, such That's as right. Brendan Murphy. He was the one who rang up Minister Greg Hunt and said, you have to put a ban on China. We're getting too many cases from China. Now, we were criticised, Australia was criticised, not only from the Chinese Communist Party, but also the World Health Organisation for, for having this travel ban in, in place. It's proven to be absolutely spot on. And again, I think all our um, Chinese Australians who returned back to Australia, who went in to isolation for 14 days to make sure the virus didn't spread.
That's really great to hear that. Minister, once this crisis, hopefully this corona wave will overcome this situation. As mentioned earlier, uh, once this crisis ends, as part of our government, will you continue your fight on independent investigation how this COVID-19 has started? There have been a lot of conspiracy theories been going on, but we as the strongest nation owes to the ones who have lost their battle with their life against this deadly virus. Will you be fighting against a special investigation to be continued once this being finishes? Um, Finny, and, and, and just in again, thank you. I'll be closing up here, but thanks very much for having us on your, your program. When it comes to the World Health Organization, um, the Prime Minister Scott Morrison is, has led the world with um, Foreign Minister Maurice Payne to say we wow. need an independent investigation because one of the reasons we spoke about before, uh, it would be unwise to have a, any independent group such as the World Health Organization or others and then doing the investigation on itself to look at the, the virus, especially when they have been critical, for example, of, of Australia, um, for when we, we put the travel ban in, in, in place. So as Australia, the Prime Minister has taken the lead on that. I'm hoping other countries will, will, right. will, would put on board. Can also make another point too. I personally, on the 1st of March, um, called out the, the and said it was dis disgusting, these uh, wildlife wet markets, whether they're in uh, China, Wuhan, or anywhere around the world. We've seen star, SARS virus um, um, start from one of these uh, wet markets through bats, and most likely COVID-19 um, will be the, be the same. I've pulled this out because two reasons. It, it is disgusting when it comes sure. to the animal cruelty, but now we have this awful pandemic, and, and yes, if you rightly point out, so many families around the world have, have lost uh, loved ones. Now, can I say, sadly, and the, some of the Labor Party members, including the Shadow Immigration Minister Andrew Giles, multicultural affairs spokesman, called me out in saying it's racist. Can I say it's not racist to call these things out? We have to call them out so they don't happen in the future. But can I just want to uh, finally say a big thank you for the Indian community because they, they knew um, what I meant by the need to, to close these wet market, wildlife wet markets down around the world. I don't care whether it's in China or anywhere else. We have to stop them because we can't go through this again. Can I say thank you very much for all your listeners and viewers. It's been great. To a lot. I now have to leave. The reason is because we're actually trying to work out how to make citizenship ceremonies go online. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonder, 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 wonder. Affairs waiting for me. That's thank absolutely. You, thanks, thanks a lot, Minister. Minister. Thanks, thanks for your, for your time. time. Thanks for really time. We're really, really happy with your leadership.